uh, Chris and Anne have been at Maker Faire several years and uh, have been demonstrating the uh, SpinBot and other projects there. And today we're going to get a, uh, let's start with a demo right here. Sure. Sure. Uh. Whoa, <laughs> that's good. All right, well that's one. Let's so, look at the other one here. Let's see if I can drive this one a little bit better. So this is a self-powered one with a crank. So you have to ex extend a little bit of energy on this one. Very good. Okay. okay. So um, maybe we'll grab the one off the, the ground here and just... Uh, just break it down for me. Tell me what we got here. So it's the one that wants to move. So this is a drawing uh, spirograph robot, and the whole concept is to use a, a an assemblable chassis that can be assembled in a variety of different ways. It uses a very simple circuit uh, that allows the the bot to drive in in the um, in a circular procession pattern, and then we use two markers on the two. Um, adjacent legs that actually give you your your pattern. Um, we like to uh, present these as kits at workshops to kids and they get to assemble them in a variety of different ways and get to enjoy some amazing artwork after mm -hmm. they're done. And of course cable ties. Cable ties are the key here. Um, we think the zip ties allow an easy to assemble uh, toy as well as they can be snipped very mm -hmm. easily and reconfigured uh, to create a new, a new toy. Right. And I think that's a key component. These are, uh, these are pieces that can be put together in different ways and you can, uh, when you're done, take them apart and someone else can put them together. Right, exactly. Right. So you're doing workshops um, and what does that look like? What does a workshop look like? Uh, the workshops at Maker Fair are all about uh, getting your hands dirty. Mm -hmm. uh, we, like I said, we sell the, uh, them as kits and they're disassembled and the kids get to uh, configure them completely uh, by themselves using the zip ties. Um, so we've done workshops in schools, we've done workshops at Maker Fair, um, museums. museums. Yeah, mm -hmm. usually about 10 to 20 st mm -hmm. uh, kids participate. Mm -hmm. and they How did this get started? Uh, just uh, the museum route, teaching after school, science classes at museums, trying to get kids interested in technology, right. uh, seeing how things work, and uh, one of the biggest issues was holding their creations together. Um, glue or glue guns or super glue, uh, kind of dangerous for the younger kids. Right. And so... And why an art bot? Um, so it's not just a mechanism, something they put together and set on the shelf. It actually does something. Mm -hmm. There's something to show, right. uh, something creative. Right. And it really is, I think, this interesting idea of it's a set of behaviors mm -hmm. that, uh, in a sense, are programmed into mm -hmm. the bot. And uh, you can change those behaviors. You can also just change the physical mm -hmm. um, structure that, that uh, 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 it's embedded in, right? Yeah, the, the, uh, the simplest ones, it is changing the physical, just the placement of the, the pins, uh, the slight angles on right. the, uh, you can change the angles, and it can do all right. sorts of Now this, this one's equipped with markers, and that one's equipped with lasers. Do you want to just so. maybe point that out in case it wasn't <laughs> obvious? Uh, this, uh, we encourage the st uh, students, the kids, to um, uh, zip tie LEDs. This one has little laser pointers on it. Um, they, they come up with a lot of great ideas because um, when they spin, they can have an art show along right. with you know, right. their, their painting. Right. And these can be, uh, we have markers on them now. We've run them on large dry erase boards. Uh, that's a lot of fun. They go pretty fast on that. But you can replace the markers with uh, chalk and do it outside on the sidewalk mm -hmm. or a, a nice smooth uh, your neighbor's mm -hmm. driveway. Uh, right. well, and what are the kinds of things we, I think we see kids learning? In this, um, you know, I, 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 I think it's pretty obvious, uh, I'll say that, but um, sometimes people do say, well, you know, it's just a toy, or kids, you know, aren't, aren't sure. really learning. Um, I think it's a great way to introduce kids, especially young kids, to basic um, electronics um, and, and motors. A lot we of have kids. Circuits here. We have a, a simple circuit, um, and some of the uh, more advanced kits allow you to complete the circuit so you get introduced to things like wire nuts and how to actually you know, create that circuit. 
Um, a lot of kids don't even know what a motor looks like. Um, so from that, you get to learn ab about motors, you get to learn about generators, um, and then you get to expand upon your kit. Um, like this one is a, is a completely battery-free kit where this one uses batteries, this one is hand-cranked. Um, so you can expand uh, really beyond all sorts of, of things, as well as uh, the actual assembly part, which is critical um, mm -hmm. because kids haven't assembled um, mm -hmm. anything beyond something like the Legos um, castle. So, yeah. you know, it's a, just a bunch of parts in front of them at the table when they start, and by the end of the session, they have a working robot that actually mm -hmm. performs some work. Mm -hmm draws, so there's a good sense of accomplishment yeah. and pride. Well, I always say it, they get to build something, then they get to play with it. <laughs> right. That sort of encourages you. Uh, I think that playing, it also makes it social, so the kids get to see, oh, that's how your bot right. works, and my bot does something different, and <laughs> yours is making circles, I want to do something right. you know, different than that. I think there's a, a true sense of ownership as well, uh, because they've actually built it, oh. so there's a, there's a lot of uh, pride associated with it, and uh, a sense of accomplishment. It also builds their confidence mm -hmm. over time. Um, with with you know how they'll attack the next yeah. the next project. What, what a, what's the lower range of ages <laughs> that you've worked with? We we had a, a three year old um, put a, a bot together perf perfectly at Maker Fair this um, this past um, Maker Fair and she was amazing with it. She was mm -hmm. able to deal uh, handle the zip ties and. Um, Mm -hmm. She was so proud. I asked that because someone here at Food Camp asked me if their five-year-old was ready for a MakerBot, you know, oh, yeah. 3D printing. And <laughs> I go, well, I don't know, but maybe uh, not. That. Everybody wants to kind of push this stuff down yeah. as almost so. as young as possible. Right. I, th I mean, I think the great thing about this is that it's never too early to be right. introduced to to um, assembling your own creations right. and exploring what um, what you can do with with technology. Right. And I think that's what we what we try to encourage. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, there's uh, making a blot there. Uh, <laughs> uh, Chris, so you're a teacher. Yes, also. yes. And uh, can you tell us a bit about your, your courses and what you're I teaching? I teach at the university level and I teach uh, industrial design, product design. I teach a manufacturing class um, where we reverse engineer products and learn how they're made and what they're made out of. Mm -hmm. We learn um, to design for production and design for disassembly, mm -hmm. design for um, recycling mm -hmm. or reuse. Um, and uh, uh, one of my favorite parts of the class is just exploring all the different types of materials yeah. uh, because that's really a huge um, It's like game. vocabulary. I mean, it's something <laughs> you get to use and it's uh, sort of neat to say, oh, there's all these materials I don't uh, know about, right? And the more you know, right. the more you know, creative right. you can be with right. them. So. Nan, you're a toy designer. Is that, I am. And, and how, do, how does one become a toy designer? I mean, there must be people who want to know. It's That's probably not a straight route. To the, but, uh. it, it wasn't for me. I um, have my background in engineering and wanted something a little more creative. Uh, so I went back to school for industrial design and um, fell in love with toys. Um, so, you know, the, the beauty about toys is that it's much more than uh, what people think of when they think of the movie Big. Um, it's It's combines a lot of uh, different facets of engineering, um, art, and technology, and understanding, like Chris said, you know, the manufacturing aspects of it, um, as well as the creative uh, problem-solving aspects. Right. How would you distinguish different types of toys uh, that are out there, and, and kind of what you, you know, sort of the end of the, that, that you're focusing on? Um, so, you know, there's a lot of, um, of course, there's tons of different types of toys. Um, you know, everything from, a, you know, building sets to shape sorters. But, you know, I, I kind of break it into the active um, toys and the uh, passive toys. Right. Uh, something that really uh, kind of gets the imagination going and then something that just kind of, mm -hmm. you know, doesn't inspire. Right. Um, and, I, you know, I tend to lean towards the really creative I want I want a toy to be a platform for creativity and expandability um, I really want that toy to enhance that child right. the child's ability to create and uh, explore so I yeah it's kind of interesting because in, in many ways we keep reinventing TV you know right. um, like even the, a lot of the apps that you mm -hmm. see the educational apps are really very passive I mean yeah you might sort of change turning pages or things but there really aren't 
as interactive. And I, I think we're going to find that parents are, uh, will be gravitating to toys of this nature because they, they, they really engage kids in a different way. Right. And, you know, after a while, um, you know, 15 minutes of a watch and see toy, you know, they're going to get bored. Kids yeah. are going to, kids are smarter than those types of toys. Yeah. You're not going to hold their interest for any length of time. Yeah. And, um, and then it's going to be recycled or hopefully recycled, but more mm -hmm. likely trashed. Yeah. And um, so we'd like mm -hmm. to do something better. And how, uh, what do you look for in, in almost testing a toy with kids, even out at Maker Fair scene? <laughs> you know, it's kind of a different environment. Yeah. It's, rather than a controlled experiment, it's kind of chaos, right? Yeah. You know, Which you is all these great kind of because there's so much unexpected things happen, both great and maybe not so great. Yeah. But it's, it's good that it's, you know, everything is, it's, it's yeah. a fast pace and it's a great what learning. Are your, what are your hopes for uh, th these classes of art bots? I think I think we hope that um, you know that they're infinitely expandable. Right. You know, we've designed them in such a way that they really uh, do support a disassembly and uh, reconfiguration and recreation. Okay. Uh, the the purpose is that uh, we hope that we can introduce kids um, at a young age to technology and kind of grow with yeah. them, getting them more complicated, more integrated with with different yeah. types of sensors, actuators, circuitry, programming, and really expand. Um, to, and to you have these layers. You have the Arduino controlled uh, uh, version and, mm -hmm. and all these things. I, they seem like a, almost just a lot of things are good for middle school, but it seems like a really good age for getting into this. Mm -hmm. And you, you know, the thing that I, I think is important too is to give kids the time to really play with mm -hmm. this stuff, not just uh, you know, the goal is to build one of these and do a drawing and you're done. It's, right. it's really the iteration yeah. and the take it apart, try something different. What, how many variations can you come up with? It's kind of a natural experimentation process that we right. really want to see more yeah. of, right? Right. Yeah. One of our, one of our the younger kids came up with the, the bot that's by, yeah, your, let's look at this as a by your side there. And, um, you know, I took my eyes off of him for maybe five minutes and then he had the scorpion, scorpion. bot. Yeah. And, um, and uh, this is a reproduction. This is I stole his design from him. He wouldn't give up his own bot, <laughs> but uh, it's uh, it, he, he did so this really we've cool. We've got two buttons here. So it says power and reset. But uh, let's give it a, a whirl here. There we go. There we go. So I can control yeah. it in different directions, and you can see the little tail or trail <laughs> that it's leaving. <laughs> you can do uh, a 360 if you just. Well, I think. Uh, it's always great to see real things moving around and, and you know I think some of the fun is just being able to control things and you know, ha right. having you know evidence that you, it, it worked is, is, is marvelous yeah. so thanks for sharing uh, these art bots with us Chris and Ann and look forward to seeing you uh, again well, thank, thank you, you. All right, thank you very much